So this past weekend, a new contestant finally entered into the fray in Weekly Shonen Jump called Super Smartphone. I sat down, dedicated some time, and read the first chapter that came out, and overall, it's a decent first chapter. Do I think it is the best first chapter I have ever read for a new manga in Weekly Shonen Jump? No. But do I think it is a solid first chapter? Definitely. And do I think that this series has potential? Definitely. Will the series survive the Shonen Jump axe? That's left to be seen. We'll, we'll see where that one goes, because we know how Shonen Jump likes to just chop the head off before the series really even gets to go anymore. Before it gets its literal head popped out of the ground or whatever, they just chop it off. So, we gotta see. We gotta see if Super Smartphone can really establish itself amongst the crowd and be able to be something unique. And so let's talk about it. Let's talk about the first chapter. Let's talk about what it does with its first chapter. What's the potential for the series and if this series can compete with the other series and the magazine. Because one of the big things that people seem to forget when it comes to the series within the Weekly Shonen Jump magazine, the series isn't just trying to stand up on its own and be something unique. It's having to compete in the rankings against all these other established series that have hundreds of chapters potentially on top of it. So because of that, a series is always pretty much struggling for air right at the start. They're like, they're getting submerged in the water, their head pushed down by these big colossal series like One Piece, Bleach, Black Clover, etc., and it's trying to struggle to the top to really stand out, even though people already probably have a huge list or catalog that they're already reading. So, can the series survive that? That's, like I said, left to be seen. Now, first chapter. What's it about? Well, as the title suggests, it is about a smartphone, or a super smartphone, called Goo Goo Goo, which is just, I'm just gonna call it a Google smartphone. I'm just gonna call it that for ease, because I just really like calling it Goo Goo Goo, just sounds hilarious, and uh, just doesn't roll off the tongue as well, I'm just gonna be honest, so, yeah. Anyways, the actual story is about this smartphone that is able to pretty much know all information in on the planet. Pretty much like if I was to have this said smartphone and I was to say what is written in my diary across the room that nobody else has seen but only I know of, the smartphone could actually pull that that actual wording from let's say my diary and show it to me on the screen. Even though I've never written it online or anything, it's on just a physical book or whatever, it would be able to tell me what it is. Pretty much demonstrating that this phone, if you narrow down the searches, etc., it could tell you anything that you want. So it's a very powerful device. You could definitely discover a lot of information that you're not necessarily supposed to know, which our MC does throughout the first chapter. For instance, finding out if there was like alien contact, you know, with with the President of the United States, you know, different things like that. So, it's clear as day that the series is definitely trying to let you know that this phone is capable of a lot. However, there is limitations. Once again, if your search request isn't, you know, specified, it might not be able to understand. For instance, if you were to say, where did I drop my money today and all that? Like, you know, can you locate, or here's a better question, can you locate the money I dropped today? It wouldn't be able to know. But it would be able to, you know, list all of the known money locations that was dropped that day. So pretty much it would actually know where you dropped it if you didn't specify. Like if I told you it was on a certain street, it would know. But if I say I just dropped money today in this area, it would, you know, list the different parts of the town where money's just laying. So that shows you its limitations. It it's comes down to the search results and how you request the search and all that if it's able to find something or not. So you can already see that this phone could definitely be put to some sinister uses if it is used by the wrong person. Like, as an example, if the individual is a bad person, they probably could figure out passwords, they probably could figure out a way to get inside stores that they're not supposed to, probably find secret exits, maybe even win the lottery if they are uh, you know, know how to uh, tamper with it or mess with it. There's different things like that. So the overall device itself can definitely be used against 
uh, others. For instance, it could be an evil device, or it could be a benevolent device, depending on how you use it, and obviously your MC uses it in a way that's able to help others around him. For instance, he finds a missing child that was kidnapped, and actually finds their location, and, you know, kind of tells the authorities where the child is, the child gets saved, and that's pretty much the main gist of the chapter. But, obviously, there is a lot more going on. So, the MC's overall established personality is he's incredibly intelligent, like incredibly intelligent, like an all-A student. However, at a very young age, he had a brother that was the exact opposite, and even though wasn't as bright as him, he had, he, his brother constantly asked him questions like, you know, what is this, what is this, and, you know, obviously intelligent MC would, you know, tell him, but, you know, the little brother wasn't able to understand that. However, as things went on, it was a happy time, one day, the brother went missing. Nobody could find the brother, the brother's gone, and you could kind of assume the brother was kidnapped. Now, about seven or so years or whatever have passed within the story, and because of that, you could assume that if the boy was kidnapped, he's probably dead. That, that's the best you could probably assume. You could probably assume that's the case. And so, because of that, you know... Our MC with the phone tries to request that information, tries to figure out what happened to his brother, if his brother's still alive, etc. But the phone denies his request. Like, no, you need to gain more Google points or whatever, which pretty much proves that the phone is denying him access for he can continuously use the phone, gain points, and then eventually at one point it will allow him access to what he truly wants. So there is some interesting themes and stuff with the MC, his overall personality, how he uses it, and that he needs to keep using this phone to be able to get what he actually wants. So we have the, the character personality established, the in-game goal already established, the device and some mysteries around it established, and on top of that we have have, you know, many different directions the story can go. Now, obviously, with this super smartphone and points, etc., and collecting them, the first thing that my mind gravitates towards when I hear that is a death battle or a battle royale type series. Like, I cannot be the only one that thinks of, let's say, you know, Future Diary or whatever when I think of a phone, points, etc. That's exactly what I think when I see super smartphone, that this series is going to turn into a death battle type story. Now, I could be wrong about this, obviously, but that is the general assumption I'm getting from the first chapter. However, there is one thing to point out, and that is that the phone makes it very clear that it is able to only know information from the planet Earth. And with this very unique establishment, it makes me wonder if there's other planets that have, let's say, these phones on it, and so this series might go into a little bit more of a, a sci-fi territory, which wouldn't be really that far fetched with a device that's able to know pretty much everything, or if it's going to turn into a series with extra dimensions, different dimensions, stuff like that, because, I mean, with one of our big questions that our MC asked right at the start about aliens and all that, it implies that maybe there is actual aliens in this storyline, and that they might play a part in the future, maybe they're the reasons why this device exists in the first place, and I doubt it's the only device as well that exists that's able to have all of this information, which, speaking of the the device, the device was given a name at the end of the chapter called Kimi, and this device, Kimi, um, apparently from the way they directed their overall response to the MC, they said that they don't have an actual personality, it, you know, they don't, but we know is definitely a lie, it's 100% a lie, and the device even specifies early on that it cannot lie, but it definitely can. There's no way it can't, because access was denied, etc. There's a lot of suspicion on the device, and if I had to assume, it probably is an AI, or maybe it's an individual that was turned into an AI. This is a type of storyline that has happened throughout the series, like many different stories and stuff, so I could definitely see, like, a person being turned into an AI of some sort, or a copy, replica, whatever, clone, and they may be forced into the tablet slash Google tablet or whatever. That is my assumption. As you can see, a lot happened. Now, do I think that it's the best series ever? No, but because of how it establishes everything it did in the first chapter in an organic way, I think that this series can get its boots off the ground. I do think that it actually could survive, but Obviously, if uh, I know myself and how I usually curse a story, when I review a series or do a first impressions on a series that's relatively new in Weekly Shonen Jump, it tends to get the 
the axe. Its head gets chopped off. So I hope that is not the case because I actually enjoy the first chapter, but it's not going to be for everyone. I, I definitely could say that this series won't be for everyone. I know that there's already comparisons that people are making saying, that, is this just being reincarnated in another world with a smartphone? I see people making that comparison and I understand that. But uh, the point though is, is that I don't think it's that series. I think that this is obviously a little bit different. One thing I do want to clarify is that this series right here, Super Smartphone, is the second attempt by the story writer of the series, because apparently back in 2018, there was a series right here, as you can see on screen, that was written for Weekly Shonen Jump. It lasted for about 15 chapters. It didn't do so hot. It obviously got axed. And so this isn't the first time, like, the author has written a series for Weekly Shonen Jump. This isn't technically a full-on greenhorn, someone that's completely new. This is someone that has already written something in the past and maybe since it's been so long since they've really have written a manga you know they might have had time to really work on what they want to do and maybe there is a lot of plans for super smartphone so that is some food for thought to mention since you know this offer is making this new series but yeah, give it a read if you want to check it out. It's an interesting first chapter, like I said. Um, we'll have to see if it sticks around, and we'll see. But anyways, guys, I uh, love you all so much. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, you know, as always, subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And leave a like as well on the video. It allows it to go for the algorithm and get notified. Be safe. Chibi out.